We have been looking at probability density functions. We've finished the whole topic of continuous random variables. But I want to go back and I want to just highlight some important notes here. Okay. Firstly, finding the mode. The mode we know, and as we've been learning throughout the whole of high school, is about finding the value that's occurring the most often. Right? But when we are talking about continuous random variables, we have a few different ways of doing that. Okay? So to find the mode, really, there's a few different ways. And the easiest way is visually. What does it look like visually to find the mode? if you're trying to find that on a particular graph. Like if we have this guy here, and we have a graph, they give you a PDF that looks like that or something, right? What is the mode of this? The, the, point. the highest point, right? The pointy point, the highest point, right? So it's the maximum value. So at the maximum value, the actual mode is x, right? Like, because you don't want to look at the the value, the, the probability, that's the probability here, right? This is the probability. The actual mode, is, it's like with stats, right? The mode is not how many times it occurs. It's which is the value that's occurring the most times. Same idea here, right? The mode is not the chance it's happening. It's the value that, um, where that has the highest chance of occurring, okay? So that's the mode visually, just looking at a graph. That's a common, like, multiple choice kind of question, or um, you, there are a few of those um, that you've seen in your textbooks as well. If we are not given a graph, if I'm given an equation, right, if I'm given, for example, this equation here, okay, if I'm given an expression, how can we find the mode for that? Because I don't have the graph for this expression. What method might we require in that sense? So I'm trying to find the highest point of a graph, right? But, yeah? Has it got something to do with f dash? Good. So Eva said f dash of x or calculus, right? And why might we want to find f dash of x? Well, because the idea is when you've been using f dash of x, what does that allow you to find? It allows you to find maximum and minimums, right? So we can do that here as well, a maximum or minimum. So this is the second method that we're doing. So visually, they give us the graph, but if they don't give us the graph, they give you an equation, an expression, then you need to um, utilize this here. And we need to be able to find the highest point, and um, one of the ways you can do that is with calculus. So let's do that here. Now, this expression, um, what's the easiest way we might want to differentiate? Because often these ones that they give you, they're not like super nice or anything, right? So just be careful. Um, this is our, you know, f of x, if you want to call it that. The derivative of this one, my recommendation, what are you thinking? What could we do with this to differentiate? It's the easiest way. You're trying to save time here as well, right? You can use quotient rule, because there's a fraction, right? In fact, if you are a bit creative as well, you might notice that you can take the 3 over 9 2 out, and what do you get? You get this, right? And then you've changed this into like a product rule question, which is argue a little bit better. But if you think even a bit more carefully, I should say f of x. This is just a constant, right? And this over here, well, if you expand this out, what does that become? 6x minus x squared. So can you see now what you might want to do instead of use, having to use product rule or quotient rule, right? You can expand it and differentiate separately. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to still leave the 3 over 92 there because I don't really want to deal with that. Um, I don't have to write twice because basically you just differentiate this inside part here. Right? Because I'm just going to, you're going to factorize back out anyway, right? So that would just be 6 minus 2x, right? Can you see how that works, right? So you've changed the problem which is arguably more difficult and you've just rearranged it slightly so that you don't have to work with any of the funky rules or anything like that. Yeah? Okay? So that's how you can take the derivative a bit more easily. And then once you want the derivative of Christian to find max and mins, how did we... Good. And please, can you communicate what you're doing with the marker, right? So you let f dash of x equal to 0. And so we have this here. 3 over 92 at sort of 6 minus 2x is equal to 0. And then you have two situations. Obviously, this constant here is, not, is just going to go away. So you've got 6 minus 2x 
Well, 6 is equal to 2x, x is equal to 3. Now, here's the important thing you need to do. To find section points, this is the method that we use. But something that students often neglect is that although they use this method, they forget to do something afterwards. What do they forget to do? Do you think? Classify. And I'll tell you why classifying is important, particularly for the mode, right? Because students can get tricked very easily. Um, in this question, it doesn't apply. But let's say we had a parabola that looked a bit like this, and this is our PDF. It was restricted on like this domain or something, right? Like let's say it was restricted from here on to here. This was our PDF. Yep. And if they're differentiating and they're finding a max or min point, what are they actually finding in this case? Well, they're finding this point here. Does that look like the highest point in the graph? No, right? So can you see the problem? The problem is if you don't really think about it, and if you don't classify, you may be potentially finding a minimum point, and then that way you're giving the value that occurs the least. That's the least probability of okay, right? Can you see the problem with that? So make sure you classify. You have a few ways to classify. You can use the table, you can use second derivative, and this is where you just need to be comfortable with your calculus here, right? I tend to use the table method because I, I don't like differentiating it. Does anyone have a preference? Or? No? I mean, you like using second derivative? Yeah. In fact, in this one it might be a bit easier because if the function is easy to differentiate, the second derivative method is probably a little bit better, right? So if you differentiate this again, um, what do you get? F double dash x is... Well, this is just a constant, right? So that goes away. Um, that becomes minus 2. Yeah. Yeah. What does it become? Just, that's fine. I think it's just going to be a constant, right? If you differentiate, because this is just a constant here. This part here is just one variable, so it's just going to become minus 6 and 9, 2. Potentially. And because if you get a constant as your second derivative, remember, what are the conditions? If f dash of x is less than 0, that means you've got a thing that's concave down. So what does that mean? That means you do have a maximum point, right? Right, and so if it's a constant, if it's always negative, if it's always negative, then it's, all, it's, it's fine, right? It's just going to be a max. You don't have to check the points. You usually have to substitute the value, right? So therefore, there's a max. Okay. Right, so that, that's just my uh, caution to you. Make sure you, if you're going to use this method, do it properly. Make sure you classify, because if you don't classify, you're going to run into some problems. Maybe you're finding the, the minimum point there, right? But you notice this number is actually quite nice. It's actually a whole number here. So you might wonder, hey, was there an easier way to do this? This is fine to do if um, this is what was required, right? But what if this was like, uh, like a one mark question, right? Surely they're not expecting you to just differentiate and use the whole method of calculus for that, right? But you're all right, there is an easier way. If you think about it, go back. It's kind of like doing this the first way. If we think about something that's done visually, okay, how can you find max, maximum minimums visually? Well, you actually have to have the graph. And although you don't have the graph for something like this, okay, that's a bit more complicated to draw, like pretend that constant wasn't there, what you could do is you could sketch out this guy. So if we're trying to sketch this out, think about the intercepts. Where are the intercepts going to be? Like ignore this constant for a second because it actually doesn't affect where the intercepts are. Where are the intercepts for this graph? Six and zero, Six and zero right? Because if you let this whole thing get equal to zero, the values for x to make it zero are 6 and 0, right? Does that kind of make sense? So all I'm trying is to find is intercepts here, right? 0 and 6. What this does change, though, is just kind of changes how tall the graph is. Remember from your transformations, right? This constant out here is just going to stretch it out or dilate in a particular way. Also, this graph, because it's negative x squared, we know it's concave down. That's right? a sad face, right? So you know from properties of parabolas, where does the maximum point occur when you have the intercepts there? Halfway between, right. So you could have actually skipped all that and just said, well, visually, right, we can actually determine this as well, okay? So what I want to emphasize is that although calculus is a method which you are able to use, the graphical approach, if you don't do it correctly, is also valid. So as long as you sketch out the graph and you make a note of, oh, okay, um, the maximum point occurs halfway between the intercepts, I'm also okay to accept that, okay? There is actually a formula that lets you determine that, x equals to minus b on 2a, if you have the quadratic equation in a particular form. But I'm okay as well if, if you just sketch out what this guy looks like, and you make it very clear, okay? So either you use calculus, if you're okay with that, 
or you can use a graphical approach if you're comfortable with graphing. Right? And you can see the advantage of that because it saves a lot of time. Yeah, and that's another good tradition, something I should have mentioned as well. Um, what if you get a uh, PDF like that's a, uh, you know, an exponential um, or you know, just if it's like a straight line, right? Like what, what do these look like? And if you try and use the calculus method here, obviously they probably won't give you one of these simple, but the um, principle still holds, right? Like if you get something like this, if you think about what it looks like, if you try and find the maximum minimum point, you're not going to get one, right? Because the idea is that these don't have any. Um, so what you might want to think about is, um, think about the end points. Because depending on the orientation of the graph, so like if it's um, having a positive gradient or a negative gradient, the mode will occur at the end points of the function because it's, uh, they use the term monotonic, which basically means it's always increasing or always decreasing. So if you check the endpoints of the domain upon which it's defined, either A or B, um, the mode should be occurring at one of those two points there. Okay, so that's how you might want to do it for these two kinds of functions here.